Hey, Bisbees. Today we are back with another book, and the title of our book is The Magic School Bus, Ups and Downs by the Scholastic Inc. So let's pop open this book and fly through this adventure together. The Magic School Bus, Ups and Downs, a book about floating and sinking. From an episode of the animated TV series produced by Scholastic Entertainment, Inc. Based on the Magic School Bus books, written by Joanna Cole and illustrated by Bruce Dagan. When Miss Frizzle is your teacher, anything can happen, even on a Saturday where there is no school. Last Saturday, we were all sitting in our houses watching In Your Face. In Your Face is this really cool talk show that everyone in our class watches. Suddenly, the host of the show, Gary Poveri, announced that a monster was living in Walker Lake. A monster? We couldn't believe our ears. We turned off our sets and rushed to the lake to check it out. When we got to the lake, we noticed that two things were missing. The first was Wanda. That was strange. She's usually the first person to jump into action. But now she was nowhere to be found. The second thing was the monster. Was Gary Proveri right? Was a monster really down there? We had to figure out a way to find out. Then Tim came up with an idea. I'll use my underwater video camera to catch the monster on film, he suggested. I'll call it Monster Cam. Tim put his Monster Cam container into the water. But instead of sinking to the bottom, it floated on top of the water. Then Phoebe came up with an idea. She thought the monster might be hungry. So she held a banana over the top of the lake. If I were a monster, it would take more than a banana to get me to the surface, Ralphie told Phoebe. Phoebe had to admit that Ralphie had a point. If the monster won't come up for a banana, I'll send the banana down to the monster. She threw the banana into the lake. Splash! But just like Tim's video camera, the banana bobbed on top of the water too. Oh no! A banana floats. That's okay. I like banana splits better. <laughs> the next thing we knew, the monster was right in front of the dock. It rose out of the water, took off its face masks and mouthpiece, and it wasn't the monster. It was Miss Frizzle. Good morning, class, the frizz said brightly. Nothing like a dip in the deep. What is she doing here? I'm afraid to find out. Are you looking for the monster too? Wanda asked. If you don't look, you'll never see. And what you don't see can be very hard to find, Miss Frizzle replied. We weren't sure exactly what that meant, but we knew that with Miss Frizzle around, we were going to find out. Just then we heard a loud whirling sound. The in-your-face helicopter was overhead. Stay out of the water, Gary Poveri's voice boomed out. For updates on the monster of Walker Lake, watch in your face. Gary Poveri's warning made Wanda angry. Gary Poveri doesn't own this lake, she said. We can look for the monster if we want to. That's when Miss Frizzle got that funny look in her eye. She whistled and splashed. The magic school bus hit the water, but it wasn't a bus anymore. It was a bus boat. All aboard, Miss Frizzle called. We scrambled onto the bus boat and buckled our seat belts. Ready to dive, Miss Frizzle, Wanda said. Ready, but unable, Miss Frizzle replied. The sinker linkers rusted, and without it, we can't sink. Is it just me, or does this sound like a field trip? I've got that sinking feeling. We floated on the water, trying to figure out how to get to the bottom of the lake. Then Phoebe came up with another idea. She picked up a banana in one hand. In her other hand, she held a rock. My banana is lighter than this rock. If I add the rock to the banana, what will a banana rock do? She asked us. 
We had no idea. She tied the two together and tossed them into the lake. The banana rock sank. Good one, Phoebe, Keisha cheered. The extra weight of the rock is making the banana sink. That's it, Wanda said excitedly. We need extra weight to sink. Yo, monster, lunchtime. We knew we had to make the bus sink, just like the banana rock. We decided that sand would add the extra weight. So we all got to work filling barrels with sand. Then we strapped the barrels to the bus boat. Phew, it was hard work. This one should do it, Wanda said as she and Arnold rolled a barrel onto the boat. We had added enough weight. The bus boat started to sink. We jumped aboard and went below the deck. Don't let your energy sink. Keep up the good work. All aboard for the last bus going down. Finally, we sank to the bottom of the lake. We could see lots of fish. We could see lots of weeds, but what we didn't see was the jet-powered diving sled whizzing above us. Zoom! Suddenly, the barrels fell off the bus boat. We're losing our extra weight, Tim shouted. We're rising to the surface, Phoebe added. Miss Frizzle smiled. Right you are. Can you feel that water pushing us up, up, up? It's the water's push that's making us float. It was a little too exciting. All of a sudden, the boat shot upward like a cannon. We were out of control. Isn't floating to the surface exciting? I don't want to float. The bus boat shot out of the lake and flew into the air. Then, plop, we landed back in the water. Phew, we were safe. Water can be such pushy stuff, Miss Frizzle said happily. But we've still got to find that monster, Wanda said. We're sunk if we can't sink. Phoebe looked around. Now how am I going to feed the monster, she asked. She tossed a slice of bread into the water. The problem was it floated. She scrunched up another piece and threw it into the water. That one sank. But why? What's the difference between a bread slice and a bread ball? Miss Frizzle asked us. Well. The ball is a lot smaller than the slice, Keisha said. Wanda got excited. So you can take something that floats and crumple it up to make it sink? Now you're thinking sinking, Miss Frizzle said. Class, prepare to crumple. Could I be excused from being crumpled? If one of us gets crumpled, we all do. Luckily, our bus boat was equipped for crumpleization. Liz pushed the crumple zone buttons, and each corner of the bus boat scrunched up. Soon we were starting to sink. Carlos was confused. If we weigh the same, how does being smaller make us sink? Maybe it's because the less water we push out of the way, the less the water pushes us back up, he should explain. Suddenly, the bus boat really crumpled. We were packed like sardines in a can. A sinking we will go. A sinking we will go. At my old school, we never went down with the ship. Down, down, down we went. Just before we hit bottom, Wanda put on her face mask. Before we could ask what she was doing, Wanda disappeared through the floor hatch. Wanda, we called. The bus boat started to rise in the water. Without Wanda's extra weight, we couldn't stay on the bottom. We needed her back. We're going up. Why didn't we stay sunk? Without Wanda, we're lighter. Wanda didn't hear us calling to her. She was too busy looking for the monster. Suddenly, something grabbed her leg. Wanda was stuck. Ah! Wanda yelled. We had to get back to the bottom of the lake so we could save her. We have to get smaller so we can sink, Ralphie said. Miss Frizzle shook her head. I'm afraid we can't do that, Ralphie. The crumble controls jammed. We're in big trouble. We have to get back down there. I've got that sinking feeling again. You mean that floating feeling? Oh no, Wanda. I know, Carlos said. 
he put on his diving gear and dropped through the floor hatch. A second later, we heard a big whoop, whoop. Carlos had pulled the corks out of our pontoons. The pontoons were big plastic containers full of air that were attached to the bottom of the bus boat. Without the cork stoppers, water rushed into the pontoons. Whoa! We all shouted. We were sinking again. I get it, Ralphie said. More water, more weight. Help! Hang in there, Wanda. Meanwhile, Wanda was still struggling when suddenly she came face to face with the monster. All right, you asked for it, Wanda said. She pulled her arm back. Wham! She gave the monster a best right hand punch and its nose fell off. Its nose just floated away. What in the world? Wanda gasped. <gasps> there is no monster. It's all just pretend. Just then, Gary Poveri drove up in her diving sled. And I get to reveal it all in your face, she said excitedly. When Wanda saw Gary, she figured out what had happened. Gary had made up the whole monster story to get people to watch her show. You won't get away with it, Wanda told Gary. Nobody will believe you, Gary said. You're a kid. That made Wanda really angry. We'll see about that, she said, and she swam away as fast as she could. Back on the bus boat, the rest of us were confused. What was going on? And where was Wanda? Then Tim spotted her. There she is, he shouted. Sure enough, Wanda was swimming toward us. We all sighed in relief. What happened to the monster? Carlo asked. The monster's a fake, Wanda said in disgust. The real monster is Gary Paveri. She was trying to get people to watch her show. We have to get to the surface to stop her. Wanda said, the truth must be told. Everyone looked worried. We didn't know how we'd be able to make it up to the top before Gary went on television. The truth is the pontoons are completely filled with water. We're too heavy for our size, Keisha said. It looks as if we're sunk for good. Just when we started to panic, Arnold came up with an idea. If the water in the pontoons weighs us down, he said, we could push that water out with something lighter. Miss Berzel smiled. And what is a lot lighter than water? She asked us. Air, we all said together. The solution was simple. If we filled the pontoons with air again, the air would push the heavy water out and the bus boat would be light enough to float. Into your scuba gear, everyone. Let's fill them up with air. Good thinking, Arnold. A few minutes later, we put our plan into action. Carlos plugged up the holes on top of the pontoons so the air wouldn't escape. Then we put air hoses through the holes on the bottom. Pumpers, start your pumps, Miss Frizzle called. On board, Arnold and Dorothy Ann started pumping. Air bubbles streamed from the air hoses. Soon air pockets appeared at the top of the pontoons. The air on top pushed the water out. Whoosh! The bus boat started to rise. Our plan was working. We've got liftoff. We're getting it lighter. We all swam back into the bus boat. Now that we're lighter, the water pushes up on us harder than our weight pushes down. Miss Frizzle told us, but we weren't rising for very long. He should look through the glass bottom of the bus boat. The corks are gone and the air is escaping, she exclaimed. Someone had pulled out the corks and we had a good idea who it was. Gary Paveri. What do we do? What do we do? Air today, gone tomorrow. Just then, 
We saw Gary Paveri's fake monster. It was rising toward the surface. Gary was going to lie to her audience and say that she had found the monster, but she was the one who had put it there in the first place. We had to float the boat and fast. How about getting bigger, Phoebe suggested. Remember my bread slice? When it was big, it floated. So if we uncrumple the bus, we'll get bigger and the water will push back more. So we'll float, Dorothy Ann said. Let's do it, shouted Keisha. We all dived into the water. We got to work bit by bit. We pushed and pulled the bus boat back to its normal size and we started to rise. We're turning this sinker into a super floater. Just as we started to pick up speed, Wanda grabbed a hold of Tim. Come on, Tim, she said. I have an idea. And bring the monster cam. And off they swam. A second later, the bus boat and the monster burst out of the lake. Right underneath, Gary Paveri. My story, Gary wailed as she fell into the lake with a splash. Wanda popped out of the water. Our story, you mean, she said with a grin. She stuck a pin into the monster. Psst. It shot upward, doing a wriggly dance as the air whooshed out. It landed on the lake with a splat. And Tim got the whole thing on videotape. Good thing for that videotape. It had been a pretty exciting Saturday, but it wasn't over yet. We all got to watch Gary apologize to her audience and we got to be on in your face. How did you get the monster to the surface? Gary wanted to know. The monster was big and light enough to float, Wanda said. All we had to do was cut it loose. And you know the rest. She grinned at the camera. Your very own monster ended up in your face. The truth always floats to the surface. And that is the end of our book. But we do have some letters from our readers. So if you'd like to pause and read that. And then on this side, we have from the desk of Miss Frizzle. And it gives you a little bit of an experiment that you can do. Because today, what they were giving you an example of was density. Things that sink and why and things that float. And why do they do that? And if you change something's appearance or the characteristics of it, it may cause it to start sinking or floating. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you'd like to follow along for more adventures, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you on the next one.